Here's a piece I cut from the bottom of the hull to make the engine compartment. And there's a piece I cut from this piece. And all of that should be what I need to create the rest of the rudder. Got some blocks inside to hold the next piece at the right position. This rudder is a perfect job for using up some scrap. So I'm going to turn all of these tubes into one long tube and then attach it to the top of the rudder. I'm using this angle to line up all of the tubing so that I can get it to be one straight piece. This hole is to let coal tar epoxy through. And the reason I'm coating the inside of the rudder with coal tar epoxy is because I can and because this way I don't have to worry about leaks. If this fills with water, it's protected inside just as much as it's protected outside. This is part of the propeller shaft that I cut off. I'm using it at the bottom of the rudder. This will be the pivot point. This is 11 gauge steel, and I've tried a lot of different ways to make this bend here. I wanna bend it along that line but I can't figure out how to do it because I don't have enough force to keep this in place. So I think I'm going to resort to scoring it along all these lines and then bending it. So I'll just keep scoring it until it's weak enough to bend and then I'll have to weld on the inside where the score is. That should not compromise its waterproofness and it should maintain its strength. Maybe I should take this to a professional shop and have them put it on their brake and do the bends for me, but I just feel like doing it myself. This is how the pros do it, right? Actually made a nice fit right there. Pretty good there. That works for me. The rudder will go the rest of the way down and it will be attached to the keel which will be like a skeg for it to protect it. The reason I have this piece installed is because I've seen a lot of logs that have problems with the rudder and they can't fix it out in the middle of the ocean so they have to make do or in one case they had to get rescued. I'll put a link to the rescue and the other rudder problems below. So this way, I'm hoping that if I have rudder problems, then I'll be able to pull the whole rudder up and out and fix it myself. The other purpose this serves is like a sea chest. This will also allow me to get as much seawater into the boat as I want and do it safely just in case I want to install a water maker later on or pump in some seawater to do dishes, whatever I might want. And of course I'll have a lid on it and the weight of the rudder will be taken by a tapered bearing which will be on, installed on top and outside of the water, protected from it.
This is a double trash bag below the oil drainage plug. That's it. Didn't even spill a drop down there. The theory is I'll be able to use this engine hoist to lift one side of the boat and the whole boat will lift up because it's so stiff. When it's up high enough, I'll push this underneath. I know exactly where it needs to go because I've got some burn marks from some welds I made near the bulkhead. And then I'll set it down on top of these wheels and hope that they are strong enough. I have this lift set up to put the pressure on two points just to spread out the weight. This rope from that tree is attached to a cleat. That way when I rest it on the wheels, if it were to rotate that way, it'll get caught by this rope. I'm not expecting any rotation, but why not plan for the worst? And then same thing over here, that rope will catch it from that tree if the boat were to rotate that way. It was not part of the plan to rest the boat up against the house, but how cool is that? I feel much more secure with the house bracing it. I often tell myself I should just get rid of these old blocks of wood that I have underneath those trash cans, but then it always turns out to be useful. How's that for a perfect fit? How cool is this? Does this count as a knockdown or does the mass have to touch the water? Does that look right to you? So everything went very smoothly. I spent about 12 hours preparing to do it and then about 6 hours actually doing it. Sixty-three more to go. All the holes are now drilled out and they're ready for a fairly large bolt. This piece goes at the bottom of the keel. That's where the rudder will go in. Motion is nice and clear. Here's where the rudder comes through and how it will sit. There'll be a lid on the top and the tiller 
will be attached to the top of this post. Ten hours later, got most of the paint off. Here's two gallons of coal tar epoxy. I'm going to put it on with a roller because I don't think this will go through an air gun. I know Seeker got it to go through an airless sprayer, but I don't have one of those. So this should do it. As you would expect, debris gets in. Not a problem. There it is. Needs some touch up, but it's good protectant for now. Looked it up online and it turns out if you thin it enough, then you can spray cold tar epoxy. I got this done just before the cold. Tomorrow it's going to be down in the 40s and then the day after that freezing. According to the manufacturer, it has to be at least 50 degrees outside. I don't put it on unless it's at least 60. 